Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. Welcome to Slamfire Radio, episode 493. Today is February 9th. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle. I'm another host, Mo. Hey, I'm Kelly. And I'm Who Adrian. are you? I know, right? <laughs> Anyways. I've been not, I'm back. It's not because I didn't like you guys. It's because I was sick for... That's what we told them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I've been back. laughs> Last week. I'm going to be coughing tonight, too, and I have my... my um, my cough medicine with me tonight um Perfect. but because it'll kill mm, anything mm, but mm. doctor prescribed um, yeah <laughs> yeah i'll probably if i have to unmute myself because i'm coughing so. okay <laughs> well let's uh nice. since you're already talking let's get in what we did with guns and why don't you let us know what you did in guns and you can rest your voice for a little bit i've been sick i did nothing with guns <laughs> <laughs> That's totally not true uh, so, uh, specific, uh, I've been going to, well, I haven't been on in two weeks. Um, I've had COVID for the past couple of weeks. Uh, so with prior to that, um, I was going to SFRC on Saturdays and bringing up my doggy. Um, and, uh, taking advantage of some of the specials there, some of the fishing, but no, um, so they have actually outfitted their store with so much fishing stuff right now. Um, um, they're converting over to more fishing stuff. So I think it has to do with some of the stuff that's been happening with the guns. Anyways, just saying, um, we have a, she shoots episode that's coming up next week. It's going to be Sandra honor. Sandra honor is the president of the Canadian shooting Federation of Canada. Uh, she's going to be on. We're going to be talking to her about her organization and how it's supporting our athletes and getting them to the next level and the impacts of uh, of C21 and how that's going to affect our shooting sports and also uh, within the Olympics and uh, the international field as well. So if you would like to come and join us, come out next week. Now, it's on a special date. It's not on the Tuesday, which is... Tuesday is actually the um, Valentine's Day, so we figured people would want to spend time with their loved ones. And so we flipped it over to Wednesday of next week, so same time. That's normal, so 8 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, 6 o'clock uh, Mountain. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing that next week. The other thing that I have been doing is planning our upcoming Maple Seed Year. Uh, we're going to be having some IBCs, which is our boot camps for our instructors here in Ontario. We're going to be starting those um, at the end of the month and into March as well. So we're going to be doing uh, IBCs for the Kingston area and then also in London. And it looks like we got some events happening in uh, BC as well. Those are going to be planned for the... Um, looks like March as well. So we're starting to populate our calendar. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, so technically, uh, Adriel, we're first. So that makes us win anyways. And we're going to be having um, maple seeds that are going to be officially called winter seeds because it's going to be in winter. So yay. Yes. Um, I got an event that's coming up, not this weekend, but the weekend after. It's going to be well, it's not an event. I'm going to be helping facilitate our new RSOs for the uh, Frontenac Rifle and Pistol Club. So we have about 15 people that are part of the club. It's specifically called Brun. So Kelly and I are going to be taking over that program and so that we can actually have our RSOs up and running for the club specifically um, and designated RSOs as well. And... I think that's it so far. I may have something else that I've done, but I can't remember. It's still COVID brain, so that's me. All right, Kyle, what about you? Uh, not much. No? Nope. Uh, Will, actually, I had uh, done some work building my modern sporter, and so go through over a couple things I had to do with it, because I had to modify the upper receiver for the trigger. 
Oh. So because of this sear, it's a little bit different sear. I actually had to modify the receiver and grind out just right in there because it, it wouldn't go in. And then I had to create space for that sear to actually move. Right. So. Now, did that actually affect the integrity of it at all? Oh, no. I took yeah. off less than a quarter inch. like, And that's pretty beefy there. Okay. If you look here, um, that's there's a lot of material right there. So I just yeah okay just on this rear lug, I had to bring that back just just a little bit, like maybe okay. an eighth of an inch. Okay. But just to work with that DH three trigger. So that's pretty much ready to go. Um, the block I three D printed up for that worked out really well. And it will still work, even though my heavy modification, it'll still work for an AR upper. So awesome. Yeah. So yeah, oh. AR upper. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> AR, what is that? Yeah, I know. So any more yeah. I haven't been listening to the show either. Sorry. But any more <laughs> any more information on you and your your uh, pending move? Finally got a step forward. Apparently my application package from the lawyers was mailed out today <coughs> so okay. mailed out to me uh it sounds like we're doing it a little bit different than they have for other people where i'm gonna have to apply at the border so it does change my plans a little bit because i was going to drive de- load up my truck you know throw all my firearms and probably my computer and a bunch of stuff into the truck for but my first trip down you. there yeah uh, and that but now i'm it just adds another trip basically because I'll have to fly down probably start work and figure out a time that I can fly back load up stuff in my truck and then drive back down and then figure out when we're actually going to do the the big move so okay but yeah but it's, it's progressing and it sound like it's actually it is progressing I'm waiting on a tracking number to find out when this uh, application packet's supposed to be here but I would imagine I mean it's FedEx international economy so i'm thinking maybe by the end of next week i don't know fedex usually pretty somewhat decent i think but much more decenter than canada post i have to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah we'll see when i get the tracking number i was hoping for one by the end of the day but it's all right finally got some contact and making progress so that makes cool. me feel better because the beginning of the week i was not really i was getting a little down and figuring oh maybe it's not actually going to happen because there was no contact and nothing but yeah. hey we're we're closing in. So cool. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good uh, news. Mo, how about you? Uh, I went to an IPSC match last weekend at the Lana Deer match uh, range that's in, uh, in Joliet, Quebec. It was uh, four, four long stages for 32 rounders. Uh, I did pretty well, but for me, pretty well is the usual middle of the pack. Um, I only had one stage with misses with Mike, so that was good. I was happy about that. Uh, one of the stages, the style that I kind of like, it was like a lot of left to right and then alternating. And then they, they had, um, they had, uh, port windows where on the one side they'd have like a lower one on the other side, they had like a one that you had to like, obviously a little bit more elevated. So there's like a lot of alternating between the two and it was fast. So it was, that was a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, then after that, um, hey, well, decided- for, for that, uh, for that match, uh, yes. so like mid, mid pack, what would it take to get you above mid pack? Do you know which like aspect of your game? Uh, you well, uh, it, it reduced, to shoot better? yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. To shoot better. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's really the speed. It's like the, the number one thing for me is I'm. Uh, you know, for, for, I just, every stage I'm just taking too long. So is it f- speed shooting or speed moving? Uh, I'd say both, <laughs> but I mean, I'm getting better at like, I'm not, I'm not shooting an array and then standing there like a deer in the headlights and waiting to go to the next one. I'm trying to, you know, be ready to go and, 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 you know, um, going to the next one but uh it's it's both it's both but it's usually when i look because i use the competitor app and i really Mm -hmm. look i see the comparisons and it's time you know uh five seconds here 10 seconds there and then you know it all it all adds up right um but really that's that's what that's what the difference from me i think from going from the middle to 
you know, maybe more closer to top 10. Um, speed of shooting, speed of like, it would be, it would be interesting if, if you use like a GoPro or something like that, or just had someone film you and then compare that to like one of the hot shots on your squad and see if it was like, see where the time was being lost. If it was being lost yeah. on like foot speed or if it was being lost on like, this guy can shoot an array two seconds faster than I can. Yeah. And every array adds up. Like it would be great to know that. Um, that would be like, if, if you could get someone to record your, uh, a couple of your stages and then compare it, you'd be able to see where, where those, where yeah. those gaps are. Right. And yeah. I've got to, and then um, a lot of these matches have, do have steel and I got to, uh, I mean, I'm not taking not every every piece of steel requires two shots, but I need to reduce the ones that I am, you know, not knocking it down on the first first attempt. So I think that adds to the time too. Um, so then I decided to so because I had I had bought the bull 1911 uh, before uh, before you know the the, the freeze is coming. Uh, so I'm actually going to start, I'm going to start using it and, uh, there's no match this coming weekend. There's one the weekend after. Uh, so I started dry fire practice. Like I set up the, the holster and the mag mag pouches and all that. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually try it in a match. I've been, I was doing my, uh, draws and, and working that working down the safety off the draw. And that was seemed to be going pretty well. I was doing the, uh, mag changes and, you know, it's just a little bit different because you're, it's a single stack mag versus a double. So there's just a different feel to that. Even putting them back into the mag pouches, it's a little bit, because I have the mm-hmm. uh, CR speed and the CR speed comes with that. Um, there's like um, a little, what do you call little angle thing, little shield. Yeah, you screw it in yeah. and, it, and it cuts the, the gap space, obviously, for to, to put the mag in. So that even that, the touch of like putting, <laughs> putting the mags back in and stuff. So... <laughs> Um, oh, and on the 1911, like, yeah, like you were saying the reloads are less forgiving on being in on having the mag on an off angle to the yes, yeah, to the mag well, yeah. But it's coming along, so I've been. I figured since I had a two week gap, it would be a good time to to work on it. So yeah, so I'm going to try it. Uh, I'm going to try it uh, in two weeks, and uh, it's interesting because the, that the gun also has a longer sight radius. Like you know, so if you're shooting irons, you got a little bit more length um, between the front and the back versus the tan folio. I can't, I didn't measure it, but it is, it is a lot, definitely long, longer sight. Um, and then I, I ordered, uh, since I'm going to use it, I wanted to get a few more mags. So I, and I ordered, uh, I have the Wilson combat elite ones and I have the ones that it came with the, which are the Mechgar, uh, the Mechgar, um, forget what they're called they they have like a, a a larger base on them and they're the more drop friendly and stuff and i like the feel of them better so i ordered a few more and uh, i ordered them from tenda and then i saw tenda had a had a sale on on nine mil ammo so i figured i might as well get a box of that while i was at it oh yeah so, they had some for like what 370 379 yeah 379 so 380 for for 124 uh 124 grain and which yeah, is and it's cci so it's not like it's like some Scorpio Rando or something country. Else. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. So, I mean, that's the right now, the end it's free and it was free shipping too. So that really adds to, uh, to the savings. Right. Um, and uh, really that's it. I'm going to, so it worked out that I was going to do my first uh, rimfire match in March, but I saw that in Sitzville, actually they're, February match is on a Sunday. For some Ooh. reason, I was thinking they're all they're all on Saturday, so I had Saturday in my head, and I had an Ipsic match on the on the on the Saturday. So I saw that it's on actually on the Sunday, so I'm going to do so. I'm going to go to that. So we'll there's see. one on March 11th and 12th, though, right? You were yeah, to there's that one too. There's that so one the too. the X22 series, and then there's a. Oh, I'm not ready for that, Kelly. Oh that's, come on, that's big boy and girl country I, I can't be doing that <laughs> you, so those yeah, are for real those can. are for real shooters not i'm just going there to and then there's the orps <laughs> as well what do you mean it's for big boys and girls so hey, no, Mo, gonna... how many how many events did you go to in 2022 you me yeah like if you I look at your say... practice score how many events are in there Oh, I don't know because then there's the ones in the Ontario site that they don't put in practice score. Oh, I would yeah. say two and if I was going to figure it out, it's two and a half to three matches a month. You probably shoot more than the rest of us combined. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah but that probably. doesn't make me, that, but you guys are like, no, but that doesn't make me good. It just means I go to a lot of matches. But remember, I didn't, I haven't been at this as long as a lot of you, right? So I don't have the. He's talking about you there. All of you. Yeah. Well, I guess we're born, you guys were born with that. rifles by your side. I like I stumbled <laughs> upon this late in life. So I did. I did oh, four I'm matches sure in 2022. I'm sure you did. Really? Uh, yeah, that's in you my did practice. Four oh, yeah. matches. Um, yeah. 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 I probably oh. did about the same. Yeah, me too. I feel they, even there more was shame. not much. Well, yeah, I wasn't joking. You, you've done more than all of us combined. Okay, Maybe then I'm re- then that I'm really terrible. I should I should <laughs> yeah. see myself out. Have a good evening, uh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we're doing is we're doing a lot. We're at the range every weekend, but we're what we're doing is we're actually we're doing the matches as opposed to shooting at putting them. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That's what happens. So do those. Yeah. Um, so that's it for me on that uplifting note. Uh, Adriel, what did you do with the guns this week? <laughs> a couple of things. I did some non-gun stuff. I, uh, I souped up, I have a cordless vacuum and I souped it up more power. Oh, oh. <laughs> there's a, there's a very dated reference there. Any, any zoomers would be like, no idea what's going on there. Oh, it's got I know three, exactly it's got, what's going on there. <laughs> it's got three times the power now. Not that it matters. Nice. Has it got a Hemi? Has it got a Hemi in there? I Pretty much the electrical equivalent of a Hemi. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> to non gun stuff, or sorry, to non uh, to real gun stuff. I did a video on the G4 minute being uh, withdrawn. I wanted to get on that real quick just to give people the beans on. Uh, oh, what's you going know on what? There. I watched that. It was good. I watched it too. Yeah. 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 And I think that sure the little, sure. based on what I saw, a lot of other people watched it too. So. Mm-hmm. It's good that you're giving out that information. I also saw um, a couple of other people put it, um, information on it. So CCFR yeah. as well as uh, Ian, our our friend. Mr. Runkle, yeah. Mr. Yeah, Runkle, the Bailey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good one actually too as well. Yep. So. And then I hit the range with my boy and nephew and a couple of listeners, uh, Thomas and Rosie. We all kind of hit the range. I brought a bunch of uh, corrosive red rifles, uh, SVT uh, 40, Mosin, muzzleloader, Garand, Glock, Wrangler. And then when I got home, I had to clean them all because <coughs> half that stuff I was using corrosive ammo with more than half <laughs> that stuff. The muzzleloader, that's that's corrosive. SVT, Mosin, corrosive. The Garand, not corrosive, but that, some of that, that, that surplus 308 ammo did give me some rust. So I had to clean it, but it as if it was corrosive. And then the Wrangler, I was having problems getting rounds in it. Like, they're really gritty getting in there. So I took it home. I cleaned it really good. And they're still, like, kind of hard getting in. And it's because Ruger Wrangler 22 LR is garbage. It's just the worst <laughs> now ever. <laughs> Super gritty. And, the, the the case, the case itself has got, like, a bunch of, like, lead crap on it and stuff. And uh, mm-hmm. I think it's just the way that they're packaged. They just ram a bunch in there and... The case maybe that is part of the processing. The the cases get lots of lead on them because they don't they don't go in very well. They don't go in very well. I was so I was doing a um, uh, orientation. I brought my Ruger Wrangler, mm-hmm. and I was um, trying to put some dummy cases in, and so in the Ruger Wrangler, and so I had to use instead of just empty casings, I actually. You had to use dummies because the empty casings ah, wouldn't go ah. on at all. Hmm. It was weird. Hmm. Wouldn't fit. Yeah. And I'm going, hmm, this is interesting. But I think that the, you're right. I think that there's some. Anyways. It's so just bad am ammo. I the only one here that hasn't actually shot my Wrangler yet? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I think so. How long have you had it? Uh, I think we all went in like last spring and bought it. We all, all peer pressured each other in last yeah. spring to buy yeah, now it. Now we're going to peer pressure you to shoot it. So well, yeah. I was already thinking I might actually bring it because this set, I haven't even shot that Canic I bought either. So we will be at the range this weekend. So I might actually bring them out and actually shoot them. Do it. Is... Bring your boy to the range. Oh, that, we're all going to be down there. Roger Wrangler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's coming up in upcoming events. We'll all be down there. All right. <laughs> Kevin mentioned he watched that G4 video in Halifax. Russ says that his is still in his safe. 
<laughs> so you're not the only one who got a, a wrangler in a as a safe queen. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it was cheap. There. And, yeah. <laughs> Russ it's better rifles to be a safe queen. Russ has been doing a lot of uh, shotgun shooting. Mm. Trap and skate. I know that. Yeah. If you're going to have a safe queen, it should be like a collectible, something that's like going to gain yeah. value. Not a Ruger Wrangler? <laughs> no. Not a Ruger Wrangler, no. <laughs> It's not going to gain any value. Just sit. oh, maybe it will actually. What are it they might. going for right now? Yeah. Infinite money. You can't buy one. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's priceless. <laughs> it is said, priceless. Yeah. Uh, I think that's about it. I got a couple of videos that I'm just working on at the moment, but uh, in terms of that range visit, the muzzle loader, I need a nipple pick. Now that sounds dirty. Uh, <laughs> pardon me <laughs> <laughs> so like the nipple where the cap goes on it's got like inside there's a teeny tiny little hole for the like blast to get through I need to like and you need something small to get through there but not quite so small that it like bends when it goes in so you need a very specific sized wire to like poke through there and make sure it's clear and mine oh, your flash hole there yeah yeah flash uh, hole. I got the thing for you uh, welding supply store get the uh, nozzle tip cleaner it uh -huh. has all sorts of different sizes and you can clean out that flash hole right nice and clean because oh, it's kind of like auto. small tiny little files for cleaning out your uh, torch nozzles okay i'll go to princess auto and i'll pick that up thank you that's because uh, yep. like if you get the the real one it's like it's expensive for i need a little piece of wire and it's too expensive for that i'm going to go to the welding shop or the welding area of princess auto and buy the cheapest one that they've got. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, yeah, that's good. Uh, in terms of the other guns, grand ran great Glock ran great. Didn't have to clean that one. Um, Mosin. Yeah. So they're all doing exactly the same thing as they used to do. But this time I got to shoot the SVT with the knowledge that it's not going to get banned. So that was kind of nice. Uh, that is about it for me. Okay into upcoming events and we got one new one this weekend february 11th we're going to be doing a valentine's day shoot at wapita shooters club so same thing as our turkey shoots except for instead of a turkey or ham you get a basket of chocolates basically uh -oh. yeah uh poker style shoot uh, during club hours so 11 to 5 10 dollars a shooter Ammo and firearm are supplied and no pal is required. I will be down there. The whole family will be down there pretty much all day. So, And you're going to have your Wrangler in a yeah, so I'm going to, I'll, I'll bring my, yes. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I've got a bunch of leather here. I'll just stitch up a holster here right quick. Dude. And a couple <laughs> and then next day. <laughs> I'm put some frills on it. What do you call those tassels? Tassels. Of tassels. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 The funny thing is I actually, have the equipment here to do that i just never did that before so <laughs> so yeah so that's happening this weekend and we mentioned it last week last week but uh I believe it would be, yeah that would be next weekend february 21st is ccfr ladies day shoot at bolts and broadheads also in grand prairie runs yep. from 6 p.m to 9 p.m they're asking that you arrive by 5.45 p.m. and have your wait. If you haven't shot with them recently, you have your waiver all done up and everything. It's $80 a person, and all the proceeds go to Audi, to go to the Odyssey House charity. Nice. Yes. So that's actually Tammy Decker yep. is the person that's arranged that. And, yeah, the CCFR Women's Program is sponsoring it. So well done, Tammy, and Bullets yep. and Broadheads. It's yep. awesome. Yeah, Tammy's an RO there at yeah. Broadheads. <laughs> uh, we got Chaz three gun. They're starting to put some matches up. So the March match opens for registration on February 18th on, at 7 p.m. on practice score. So if you just go to practice score, search up Chaz, C-H-A-S, three gun, and you'll you'll be able to find it there. It's going to sell uh, out quick. I was at the range. Do you, think the match, do you think the March one will sell out quick? I was at the range on uh, Sunday, and I met more than a couple people who were tuning their guns up for that March match. Nice. So okay. they're anticipating it. I don't know if it'll sell out. Like, it's going to be cold, and, and the weather's going to be crappy, but uh, yeah, I know that there's people who are getting Sloppy. their guns ready for it. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, you're got middle of summer. You gotta be right on there because you sell out in less than a minute. So, yeah. Sorry, my dogs um, are fighting. No problem. <laughs> uh, so there's another one put in here. International Ladies Day in Stittsville is on March 11th with Carleton University and QCEF Women's Group. Visit the Carleton University Shooting Club page for details. Yep, I'll be there. So if you want to come out, come see that. International Ladies Day, Women's nice. Day. Sorry, it's International Women's Day, but they're holding a Ladies Day shoot. That's it. Um, I'll throw another one in here because I know we're starting to plan for it. Another club should probably think about it too. Uh, first weekend in June is National Range Day. So mm. yeah, get your get your clubs together and start uh, planning what you're gonna do for for that day. I know we're talking basically like an open house more or less kind of thing. I don't know all the plans that are going into it, but uh, yeah. So a little reminder there for everybody. Okay. I gotta go and rescue my hat that I just threw at my dogs. Just so one. Good luck. <laughs> is that the Ontario equivalent of the, what is it, the down south where you sh- throw the shoe? In Ontario, you throw the hat? I think so, yeah. <laughs> it, and you're mute, you're muted, Adriel. <laughs> in uh, in Asia, you got to throw a sandal. Flip flop. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We will get into the news, which is where there is some news. Uh, Amendment G four has been withdrawn. We're going to talk about that in the main topic. So move on from there. Uh, CCFR legal fund donations. Uh, the court date is rapidly approaching. April 11th through 20th is CCFR versus Canada, and you know we still still need more more funds. I don't know where yeah. they're quite sitting at, but uh, you know, well, court case was, isn't isn't cheap. No, so. there there's a lot of people that have been donating, a lot of ranges that have been donating organizations. So mm. there's just yeah. too many to name over the past little while. Um, oh, that's awesome. But at the same time, I know that we were a bit 600000 in <laughs> the hole. So every dollar that you can donate, it would be helpful. So go on and do that. Join, donate, and you can do that by going to firearmsrights.ca or you can send an EMT to finance at firearmsrights.ca. Go and do both, actually. Become a member yeah. and then also do a yep. donation, too. The reason that it's important to become a member uh, is also, and become a member of uh, all our organizations, but become a member means that so we can actually physically say, these are how many members across Canada yep. that are supporting us. And that's a significant portion. By the way, um, pol- we're not a political, um, we're not political Specifically, this is all entertainment value, but sometimes you do have to be political. Um, but um, things that matter to politicians are our votes. So if you can show a portion of the community that we are gun owners, it means that uh, they may listen a little bit more too. So that's just me saying that. Go and do that. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we will get on to new gun stuff. And new gun stuff is brought to you by Bullseye North. Mm. Need a new boomstick? Bullseye North is Canada's shooting superstore and a proud sponsor of the CCFR. With a wide selection of guns and top trending gear for any shooter. Got free shipping over $200. Some exclusions apply, like ammo. I would imagine powder is part of that as well. Uh, Subscribe to their weekly newsletter to get first access to their hottest deals. All right. The first thing I want to show here, this is actually something that Bullseye has. Uh, Normally, 30-30 ammo, you're looking at like a heavier bullet, something that's flat, something that doesn't have very good BC because it's got to go in a tube. They have the Horny Lever Revolution 3030 in a 140 grain monoflex uh, mm. bullet. So nice. lighter, faster, uh, aerodynamic. So you can get a little bit more distance out of it. So nice. That was kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, the next one I wanted to show is Frontier Firearms has surplus Montreal police ballistic vests at 269. So if you're looking for a ballistic vest, they have those. These are level two protection for costume use only. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're not even, they're yeah. not even so- stop proof. Sorry. Uh, yeah. 
bag. Is this also stab stab vest? Yeah, yeah, level two. I, I'm level two is stab, isn't it? Yeah, okay, we'll buy one. Um, we'll put one on someone and we'll stab it mercilessly. So they've been warned by the Montreal police. So you know what that means. They're going to be sweaty. Uh- <laughs> true. True, true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you ever see how they clean this? We got a machine vest. at work. It's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. You just. Oh, how do they, how do they you, clean a vest? You put the vest on, you put it in the machine, and it's like. It looks like almost like a. A dishwasher, industrial dishwasher. It's kind of cool. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, it have to be because they will be sweaty. They're gross. Yeah, yeah especially in the summertime. Uh, this isn't new, but um, it's the first I've seen it. I don't know why I didn't see it. Uh, did you guys see the Caltech P50 before? No, no, I have not. Okay, it's five seven. It's a pistol. Yeah. It holds fifty rounds. <laughs> a pistol Looks that holds very fifty simil- rounds. Is that the mag right there below the barrel? Uh huh. Uh huh. Look at so that. It's very similar Whoa. to mag to the to the P ninety. Uh huh. Or PS ninety. Like, yeah. And then it pistol. then it rotates in, in play as it feeds it. Chunk. Yeah, rotates up. Oh wow. Mm hmm. Huh. Fifty fifty rounds. That thing's got to be heavy, fully loaded, hey? <coughs> yeah. Trigger <laughs> pull. Oh, and Brian Tan saying unloaded. it does it. Uses P90 mags. Hmm. So cool. Neat. Yeah. Anyways, I haven't seen them before. We can't get them here in Canada no. because it's a Mike's pistol. asking how we have not seen these. And I know personally, I typically I see Caltech and I glaze over. So, but it's looking up. It's so weird. I don't know how I didn't see yeah, it. Yeah. It's got a. It. <laughs> Brand says it uses P90 mags. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Demo Ranch has a video of it. Okay, cool. So I probably saw it, but totally blanked and just in and out. <laughs> we didn't. We probably didn't get our uh, our Keltec shipment in Canada in time to even see these things. I bet you there's none of these in country. Oh, probably. No. In which case, we just have to live vicariously through Demo Ranch and soon Kyle. Uh, let's see. And the next one here, I just thought this was neat. Look, and this is a Rossi M92. Profit River has it. It's in 44 or M mag. So if you're looking for something that's a close in classic rifle for, uh, for hunting, I would say that would do it. Hmm. Did you guys see anything else that was cool? I guess the, the, t- um, Tenda had a decent sale on nine millimeter, like, uh, like Mo was saying there. Yep. Uh, 379 for 124 grain CCI. That was brass too, right? It wasn't even aluminum. Yeah. That was fancy. Nice. Fancy, fancy. Like I gotta be reloading some two two three coming up here because I need some for March. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead <laughs> out. I'm like I, I went and looked in my like my bulk two two three. I didn't buy all, all last year because it was too expensive and I'm I'm very cheap and the price hasn't come down. So I'm I'm gonna be reloading, I think, this weekend. Saying they they had some great Colombian marching powder on hand when they designed this and <laughs> Doesn't Caltech always when they design something? Yeah, yeah. It's there. It's there. It's got to be like a requirement. That's the entrance exam. Is normally you have a a uh, drug test to make sure that you don't <laughs> have any, but they <laughs> sobriety is not required. <laughs> His drug test came back clean. Get him out of the building. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That's all I got for you again, stuff. Okay, well, we'll get on to the main topic, and we're going to talk about the G4 Amendment withdrawal. Yeah, I think, um, so I think most people have watched videos on it so far. Most people know that the amendment got withdrawn. The amendment had like SKSs and and, uh, M1 Garands and that kind of thing in it. But um, there's actually a couple of interesting kind of side effects of, of withdrawing this, right? And we're just talking about it before the show. So this amendment had a couple of things like explicitly added to it that um, we're not sure if banned or not. The M1, the, the number one Ruger, for example, mm. um, in the OIC, it says any gun that's capable of firing more than 10,000 joules is banned. So we took it that to mean like, okay, Ruger number one in, in 460 Weatherby banned, but Ruger number one in 25 six. Should be fine, right? And then with mm-hmm. this newest uh, G4 amendment, they said, no, all of them are banned. 
and yeah, all the they Mausers. did it by name, not by mm-hmm. yeah. all the. Essentially, if uh, if any cracked out gunsmith managed to take that action and make a four sixty or bigger, uh, the whole thing is banned because you could turn it into a assault weapon, assault <laughs> style weapon. <laughs> I uh, like Ian's yeah. uh, quote on the style. If it's something says style, it means that nothing, nothing of the preceding word is in it. Like if you say, if you, <laughs> yeah. if you got beef style uh, yeah. soup, like there's no beef in it. it if it's beef, assault no. style, there's no. no assault in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. That's a very good way of looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. It was cute. But uh, yeah. So our Bowser's uh, fine. Our Ruger number one's fine. Bull. Mm. I think the, Biggest thing to come out of it is the uh, the long rifle magazine ban. There was going to be a lot of fill in there. Uh, that's not part of the OIC. They were no, going to. It's in C21. It's oh, in C21 right. that yeah, they're going to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. My, my yeah, bad. There's, there's actually a bunch of stuff that they still left in C21. The mag ban is going to screw us royally, depending on how yeah. they uh, interpret that. Uh, public safety said that they're going to be redefining that so that and the word that they used was never the magazine can never hold more than the rounds it's supposed to now what does that mean does that mean that those supposed uh, to from no factory they go ahead countries. do that just change all our mag laws to how it was designed okay no but like never <laughs> like so, some countries chop the bodies some uh, and canada has a legal definition of like the body of the magazine means something and the rest of the magazine means another so they may require chopping the body of the magazine which would be mm. effing awful that would be yeah. like pretty catastrophic all your well i mean already a, a 10 round magazine in well of course i'm going to say ar or any of the the 180s you put a 10 round mag in that like it barely sticking out put a five rounder in there it's cool well that's just it yeah yeah it'd be, <laughs> <In any. laughs> it would yeah in any that's a good way of putting it mm-hmm. and any magazine it's not it's not the cold it's just canada yeah. Yeah. it's a lot better than the term that i had in in my head <laughs> 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 the not safe for YouTube term. <laughs> yeah. So, so do we do we think it's going to stay this vague for a while? It's or... going to be purposely vague. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Is it going to be kept yeah. this way just to keep everybody kind of guessing? And well, C20, prime example, one's still going to go go through though. Yeah, yeah, but it's still going to be vague. Like, look at the OIC and then the following FRT bands that we still don't know legally where where that stands so So i guess that's a uh that's good clarification for like the listeners there was the oic ban that banned ar-15 that banned did they have the xcrs and that kind of thing in there too or is that effort yeah the xcrs were on that xcrs Uh, maccabee defense was named on that i do believe no no they they weren't tens were all in there yeah stag tens were uh, i don't believe the Maccabees were I think that was an FRT thing yeah and then we had this FRT ban afterwards that the RCMP does not make law they don't get to decide which guns get banned or not so but them just saying like oh this stuff's all AR variants um but we don't have to prove it is uh is something that we need our day in court on um and that's I, I don't know where the ATRS lawsuit's going but that's uh that's in there yeah. Oh, and Mike's yeah, confirming Mike's... Maccabee got FRT. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there was, and then there's C21. C21's, all this stuff is just like the government or the RCMP just like randomly deciding this stuff. C21 was, let's put this in uh, in in law. Now it's going to be legislation, not yeah. never mind uh, the government just deciding by ex- executive order, right? Hmm. Well, and a lot of that was because they were trying to do the municipal handgun bans, but then they figured out that other than like Montreal and maybe Toronto there or Vancouver, there weren't many yeah, municipalities they weren't that any were support anywhere else. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Ooh. So they, they just, just, they did the handgun freeze anyways, even just yeah. OSD. And now this is the legislation to back it all up in addition yeah. to some other stuff. So, I mean, yeah. we've been kind of living the reality of C21 just because they've already like pseudo banned all this stuff. Um, without the legislation 
But then C21 also has the magazine thing in it. And they say they're just like, they say that's not even part of C21. They're just going to do it. In C21, it says like, this is going to come in via OIC sometime. Yeah. Uh, they also have red flag and yellow flag laws, which um, are pretty risky from like a, a swatting uh, risk. Like someone could use those to uh, to swat someone pretty effectively. So uh, if you want yeah. more information on that, Ian's got a good video on uh, on the risk of that. Uh, there were a couple of other things in there too. Yeah. yeah, when we say Ian, we mean Ian Runkle, not Forgotten Weapons. So. Yes, for, uh, Ian from yeah. Forgotten Weapons doesn't care about our, yeah. uh, our laws <laughs> no. all that yeah. much. Uh, yeah, C21 had the freeze of handguns, red flag laws, uh, expanded license revocation. Um, they increased yeah, because now the- it's a lifetime record instead of your last five years. Five years yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They increased the potential max penalty, but it'll never get used. You can you can just yeah. randomly kill people in well, Canada and get way less than those those penalties. Yeah. Well, when they were dropping the minimum, yeah, they're never going to come to max. It's just. For just face for I walked in on this conversation at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Kelly. Hi, I'm back. Uh, one thing that is like they're authorizing wiretaps for two firearms offenses, but they've got like some real piddly firearms offenses in here. Like you know, modifying a magazine is like changing the tube size on your shot on your semi-auto shotgun. Modifying your magazine is a co- are the cops going to like wiretap you because they think you're modifying a, a, a shotgun magazine, right? Which all three gunners are doing right now, by the way. All yeah. three gunners are getting a, a tube that's too long, permanently modifying it to whatever the length is that's legal, yeah. and then going with it. That's one or maybe two. Maybe they're like maybe there's like a traffic in. So like. I don't know how I feel about that one because it feels like they're just making it so they can wiretap yeah. like a gajillion but, people for. Well, yeah, it's modifying it to make it legal to attach to the gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, that there's also, I think that there's also, <clears throat> as they said, instead of just one, it's uh, one or two, or sorry, two or more. Um, but it also has to do with um, the um the crown if they can actually make a stuck i don't think the crown would actually say okay this guy's a three gunner and he's doing a ex- two extension but uh, that's just me uh, yeah. trust them as well pretty soon control. that if the mag thing goes through that won't be an issue because you'll only be able to have five in their period anyways so five of what correct well five that's... of what in your shotgun the, well the i think two they're... and a half inch shells those are one and three or the one and three quarter shells you well, that's look at those, one of those look things at the that minis, needs to get right? clarified because you can already only have five of the largest shell, but they... That's they, not actually written in the law. It's not five of the largest shell. It just says five. It doesn't say five. what kind. That's what we've taken it. We've taken it to be like, well, five of the largest yeah. because that's yeah. what makes sense. But it's not tested in court. It's not uh, It's not written like that anywhere. Uh, who knows what they're going to do with that. They could just make a decision. Eh, we've decided that it's the one and three quarter inch ones. Get stuffed. Stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Some of the other things in there, they prohibit prohibition on. If that's uh, the case, then it will get challenged in court. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, but the the law is, is like very vague. Uh, like it'll get challenged in court, but like two years later, maybe we'll get a, a decision on that. That would be fantastic, actually. Please, someone, some like old yeah. person who's uh, who doesn't mind uh, the time, uh, the yeah. team. has money to spare <laughs> and the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll we'll fundraise for you. We'll fundraise for you. You just have to uh, you have to get charged, and you have to have the cop cop stick it. We, we need to set these up a little bit more. Some sting operations. <laughs> Yeah. I like Mike's uh, idea. We need a patent an 18 inch shotgun shell. Uh. <laughs> this is only chambered for the 18 inchers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of the other things that are oh, the, the air gun, the replica ban is still in there. So the airsoft. Yeah, the airsoft. Yeah. Soft. Yeah. Um, is that it? Regulations on cartridge magazines. Oh, strengthen secure storage regulations. They're going to do that via OIC. What does that mean? Really? What does yeah. that mean? Well, that's exactly. just what does that yeah. mean? Yeah. Pretty strong storage regulations in Canada. They got to be in a safe or a room constructed specifically for it. Or like if it's a. Do you think it'll team. be? Do you think it'll be central storage? 
I don't think it'll be central storage. They couldn't it's pull. They couldn't pull that USB. off. Yeah, I think it could be just something shittier, just something much shittier. Right now, if you wanted to, you can have a safe by your bed with a gun and a mag, a loaded mag inside it. A locked case yeah. inside of a locked case inside of a locked case. <laughs> well, I think the very start will be we that locked. you can't put ammo and firearms in the same safe anymore. So yeah, probably lock your ammo separately. That would be yeah. shitty. No matter what, that would be really shitty. Yeah. yeah. There's all kinds of shitty things that they could do. That'll, that'll stop that the gang there? shootings for sure, right? Without that safe storage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so all those things are still in C21. Uh, and unless you guys keep mailing the NDPs and the greens and the block, uh, now that they pulled out the hunting guns, uh, they will uh, push through the rest of this garbage. So uh, please continue to put pressure on yeah, right. political yeah. parties. I'll yeah, it was a small victory, but we still got the battle ahead. Yeah. I'm wondering if they actually, because Trudeau was lambasted for this, and a lot of it was because of hinting. Uh, even the NDP wasn't going to actually support this. Let's... I think, mm, yeah, my comments. But, about but that. it it, sh- but, it shows. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say it shows how loud the voices can be mm-hmm. if, if if everybody's involved, right? So well, it's yeah. not a small no. it's not a small group, right? Because if it was, then they just would have been pushed through, and then that would have been the end of it. Well, thank you for to Corey um, for starting this <laughs> and. He's, anyways, I'm saying that because uh, people really started to um, to take notice when the hashtag I'm with Corey started. And he got raked over the coals for that as well. But I think that is important. Hunters Price. out there, Corey Price. Price. Yes. Yeah, Carey Price, yeah. Carey Price, yeah. Carey Price. He plays for the Canadians. Canadians were. The Canadians. The Canadians. And it was the, the Canadians are dicks. But because <laughs> oh. they were t- anyway, okay. Do you actually get um, to the playoffs once in a while? A no, I'm talking about Toronto? I'm talking about the management <laughs> team of the Canadians. Oh, sorry, I thought this was some <laughs> slight against them because you thought it was a rivalry thing. I, about your I, Toronto. Yeah, Maple you know what? Leafs. Toronto is my team, but I also am a realist, so I don't actually think they'll ever win the cup again. No. So, but and I don't like the Canadians at all. One reason is because my ex-husband loved them. Uh, the other reason is <laughs> that's a good reason not to like them. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but. Uh, but at the same time, the Montreal Canadiens basically drove a bus over him and backed it up three times. Mm-hmm. So, um, but but people started listening and advocating yeah. and sending those letters and that as well. I think that Trudeau saved face a little bit by saying, okay, you know what, we're going to take it. We're going to actually remove this. Um, but at the same time, I keep saying that. But at the same time, I think that if they really want to implement some stuff, they can do it through an OIC again. Well, and this he's just going to twist this and see, I was being reasonable. I was trying to do this. I listened to you right. guys, and I, I, I compromised. I think that it is a win for gun owners, though. I also oh, absolutely. Think, yeah. I also think that the hunters out there that uh, were on board with us, they need you to continue to be on board with us mm-hmm. and not say we won. Yeah, three yeah. three gun was going to be super hooped. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have, <laughs> we didn't have other options. <laughs> no. no, you were running out of toys. <laughs> even even now, like okay, you have to have a handgun, and uh, if you don't, you're hooped. Yeah, uh, but but at least you can go get a WK or an SKS or something that'll shoot a little mm-hmm. bit quick to uh, to compete. Hey, I can shoot my one WK gun. Yeah, did you fix it yet? No, hell no. Mail that shit to me. <laughs> okay. Mail it back to me. I'll fix it. I'll put it back in the mail for you. It'll run. I know. It okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I like fixing guns. I like doing gun stuff. My Dremel, <laughs> she begs to be used. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like to rest that Dremel. <laughs> yeah. So I took it to somebody in their own. I don't know. Whatever. I will. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'm happy I get to shoot my ass. Yes, I'm one grand. I had like four or five guns that were going to get banned. So it's very cool that they will not be banned. Right. There is 
I think there's still a lot of as the reason why we're talking about this again, and I think it's really important. Go and watch uh, the Honey Year guys video on it. He did a really good job of explaining it. He's very good. Yeah. Yeah, he's a really good guy too. Can we lightning round? Is it banned or is it not banned? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Type eighty one. Is it banned? Not banned. It's not, not banned. banned. Not banned. Not banned. Uh, I, I, I know the answer. I'm just going to throw some names out to you guys. Uh, WK 180? Not bad. Not bad. Because, yeah. like, you know what's going to happen. People are going to yep. be commenting and emailing us. What is this? Is this? Is this? Yeah. Not, not banned. banned. XCR. Banned. Still banned by <laughs> FRT, which is an opinion by the RCMP and isn't law. But uh, No, that was listed in OIC. XCR was, was listed. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what about the B&T APC? No. Two, two, not, three. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Still just a good too, one. Just too expensive for most <laughs> most folks, but not that's, bad. What about the what's that Chilean one that's in two two three and three oh eight? SG five forty two? The f- FAME. Do you think yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh not bad. Not bad. Mm. Not bad. Not bad. Still good to go. And they're they're still available for sale too. I think Cal, uh Calgary Shooting Center has them. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. That would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, right. What are some of the other cool? What about um, FX9 PCCs? Not That's banned. not banned. Not banned. They're all. I think they're all. All the PCCs are still good to go. Oh well, that magazine thing might really hoop them. I was just gonna say, rounders. wouldn't that hoop people? We don't know how yeah, that magazine thing is gonna work. You know, the mag will affect them, but right now they are used as normal. Mm-hmm. Uh, FME, yes, the FME SG54. Those are really cool. I saw one with the UGG boot uh, stock on it, the ACR yeah. stock, and it looked sick. It was so yeah. cool. Yeah. Try to think of other guns. AR15. <laughs> okay, so people keep asking, does this mean I can take my AR15 to the- No. <laughs> yeah. What if you're oh in Alberta? No, in Alberta? don't do no. it. <laughs> or be prepared for challenge legal challenges. <laughs> As this is a, a public show on the internet, we don't recommend that you break the nope. law. <laughs> nope. So just to uh, clarify, your AR-15 is still banned. It was with the yes, original yes. OIC. Yes. So no, you can't take it to the range. No, just take it out of the safe, look at it, and then put it back in. Mm. Stag 10? Banned. 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 What are the other cool ones? I can't think of any others that would, uh, that would be uh, like, really common. Actually, I think it was FRT, like the Coyote, and that. Uh, Cobra HG105, that Bullpup 12 gauge. Oh, not bad. No. Good to go. <laughs> Those were going to be named in there. Uh, trying to think of anything else. Any others that, that might come up that uh, people might wonder about? Siberian is not banned. Siberian's not banned. All the W, all the one uh, one eighties. Now I want to get my hands on one of those BCL Siberians because I saw uh, Victory Sports did a video of it and it looked great. And the features, I, like it's got BCL's got this uh, bolt release that's on the same side as your mag release. Go fast. It's a it's a a real gamer part. Are they and, just by uh, is, are they just by order right now? I don't think anybody has stock. They have some um, testers, like some yeah. some floor models. Yeah. Modern, Modern Sporter, Sporter, that was FRT. Yeah. So that's up for interpretation. Uh, Carrie. Hey, Carrie. Uh, this is actually going to be my direct report once I go down to the States. So he says, uh, can somebody explain AR laws to can- in Canada for me? You can only possess but can't use, similar to handguns. Correct. And... Basically, yeah, they're the same. If you had them once the ban came, you hold them, but you can't buy or transfer Excuse me. them. Uh, handguns you can still use, but ARs are prohib. They've actually been given prohib classification. So basically, but we weren't given prohib designation on our licenses. So they are safe queens. Correct. They just sit in your safe or your gun yeah. room and you can't take them to the range. And, uh, and that's it. 
You so can that, move. You can move with them, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Yeah, and yeah. you can import them, or sorry, export them to the U.S. If you're interested. Uh, no, well. ARs is actually the one that you. Can, it's trying to get an AR exported to the U.S. is the one that's. Like, it just doesn't happen. They, mm, go and read the OIC. You should still be able to export. No, on the U.S. side, they don't take them. They don't want them. No, so I had a. Uh, are I they relics? Are they relics? Down there, moved to Wyoming. Uh, Brent from Hammer Armament, and that was like one of the things he sold was his ARs, and he brought a bunch of stuff down there, went through the whole export process and everything. Right. And he said, "Yeah, no, the ARs, it just it's not going to happen." What really? about parts? Can you just like strip it down to a lore and leave the lore behind? Oh yeah, that it's oh, just yeah. registered parts. Cares. It's a hundred dollar lore. It's registered parts, right? So yeah, yeah, that's easy. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, carries so they are relics. Yeah, basically, yeah. Your uh, yeah. your ARs are relics, and you just sit there and they catch yeah. your drool when you're looking over them. So we've been they're prohib, but we've been granted amnesty until they're heard. It was supposed to be actually last fall. We were granted amnesty, and but yeah, until October this year. Until October, so they've extended one more year until so that we can hear yeah. the court cases that are currently being. Um, before yeah. the Supreme Court of Canada on challenging whether it's uh, lawful or not. Yeah. Well, and they also still got to figure out how they're going to take them because they still haven't figured that out. No. <laughs> they start uh, like a month less before the market they... value. I still well, think. I mean, that... physically, how they're going to collect them. Because yeah, I the think actual, the whole yes. buyback is pretty much. Yeah. It's not. Okay, I'm going to get mad now and just leave. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a buyback. No. I bought it. Yeah. They never I'm had ready. it in the first place. It's not a buyback. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Yeah. We're going Tried to do a background check on the government. And they, I found some like real sketchy yeah, stuff. There's, I'm oh, not yeah. some sketchy oh, stuff them. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, is we're, a lot to have it. Come on. Yeah. And yes, we will build something very nice, Carrie, I'm sure. Uh, I'm jealous. I'm <laughs> Whatever. Jealous. You two, you two get lost. <laughs> Whatever. <okay. laughs> Or, yeah. Uh, X95, Tavors. Not bad. Oh, not banned. RDB, mm -mm. Type 97. No. Not banned. I'll still good to go. I'll still get yeah. to go. I'm actually quite happy about hand. that. Yeah. That's um, uh, one of my buddies was like, hey, I'm going to get into three gun. What should I shoot? And, I'm, and he's a lefty. And it's like, okay, well, uh, RDBs seem to be pretty good. So get yeah, one. Yeah, well, they got that bottom eject. So that's nice. Yep. Yeah, so and, and like fully ambi, you can swap the charging handle to one side or the other. Um, they're they don't break parts like the yeah. 180s do, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, really good, cho great choice. Or even the, like if you just prefer something like short and handy for coyotes or something like that, something that would be good taken out of a truck to shoot a coyote mm -hmm. on the run, like an X95 or something like that, it's very nice, short and compact, yeah, yeah, smaller package for sure. Mm -hmm. Still a bull pup, but. Mm -hmm. That's like why it. it's easy to get it in and out of the vehicle. Yeah, it's not a good. It's not good to shoot, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm partial to the pups. Yeah, right? they look cool. Yeah, they look cool. Yeah, they they do look cool mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, I've shot. I don't. I just they feel so weird. Yeah, it's because oh, they don't shoot without them. a doubt. Right. Yeah, they feel well, weird. Armed hiking, armed hiking with it with a uh, bull pup though, so great. They're so compact. They don't snag on any trees. Yeah, like wearing could... one on your front, so good. Kelly, is there's so many other hunting. firearms you could take out in the bush besides the a Tavor is bulky though. Like it, it is a smaller package, but it's bulky, right? It's um more square. It's not like long and svelte. Like I mean, a, I'd, I'd prefer a, take a like a Ruger American or something like a scout rifle over taking like a Tavor like a t out. As just like a just walking bush gun. I took my Type 97 out as a bush gun. It was amazing. It didn't get, <sighs> you could take a leak with it on your front just because it's so small and out of the way. I would Kelly, it might be a challenge, but uh, <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to know. Adrian, thank you. <laughs> Have you ever tried doing that with a regular gun on your front? It's hard, Kelly. No. Actually, I'm walking through the bush. I no. can't say I've had a. Firearm slung from my front. It's either over my shoulder, or on my bag, or in my arm. Yeah. So. Oh, so like I do the shoulder thing for like a, a deer hunting rifle, but for my varmint guns, because like if I if I I'm waiting for a coyote or something like that, 
the in front if you, you need the side attach points i'm gonna use a pistol yeah the two points yeah side attach points and it sits right on your chest and you can just pull it up or just leave it slung like that is so fast it's so much faster than the out back oh with the for other sure sling. and your hands are free i could see the benefit yeah. for that for sure yeah yeah mike agrees with me yeah, you know what? I'm going to showcase that. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I, you know, we should talk to Mike after the show. Let's see if we can get him on. And he has all these ideas. I love Mike and his ideas. So mm-hmm. we should talk to him about how, hey, Mike, how did the Lethbridge show go? Uh, not Lethbridge, Lloyd Mister. He was organizing that. So practically the same place. Somewhere no, south. It's, it's not <laughs> the same place. Lethbridge and Lloyd Minster are. Totally opposite. So <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, Kelly uses her um, Tavor to go deer hunting with. She hasn't shot anything with it yet. Do you guys have caliber restrictions for big game in Ontario? Depends. Depends on where you're located. Because I know Alberta, really? twenty. Like if you had two, two, three, you yeah. can go big game hunting. You have Some to have a minimum twenty five cal or two. No, not yeah. twenty five. It's yeah, yeah. two forty three so, minimum, basically. Yeah. So it depends on where you are located, because I know that in southwestern there was there's some areas where it's only shotgun slugs only. Mm. Or it's here. No, we can use. Mm. Oh yeah, I'll tell you, we broke an attendance record. I think awesome, good for you. Um, yeah, after the show, I'll tell you about some caliber stuff for deer hunting. Okay, I'll talk about it here because <laughs> it's yeah. entertainment only. Yeah. RCMP. Um, <laughs> not on our topic but uh carrie's asking if there's any cerakote techs in canada and prices reasonable mm-hmm. and yeah. yes we we do have some i know i i wasn't actually certified by cerakote but i did a bunch of cerakote jobs got set up for it um we got more Denis. legit guys yep yeah no to me it box. was certified yeah. um black box um, black box uh, yeah of course um, uh there's else? also um EM precision i think mm-hmm. yep. do they yeah. yeah, Amber Lynn over in um, West Kootenay as well. She, yeah. uh, she her, yeah. uh, Cantac. Thank you. I had yeah. to think um, about it again. I know Notch great. and Post, they don't do Cerakote, but they do Duracote, and I think they have another coating that they do. Mm. Um, I do believe... Uh, so there's a bunch was, of them. Yeah, there there is a bunch. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. And prices, I mean, it's Canada, so it's probably more expensive than anything down in the states but also it depends on who you're going to and what style of job you're getting again red tower is a red tower marine um tower yeah they do awesome jobs here i've seen a lot of their work at tacom and all that so i okay yeah um that's pretty much wrapped up our main topic exhausted the c21 and Amendment stuff. No, yeah, we're exhausted. <laughs> uh, well, we'll get on to listener feedback, and we did actually have a Facebook message from Link, so I haven't replied to it, but I'm gonna take what we say in response to it and put send a message back to him. It says, "Hey, longtime listener and part-time shit disturber, I've been thinking about getting into reloading." With the prices of what I shoot going through the roof, I think it may be time. Any suggestions for a good starter kit to look into? I'm looking to reload 9 mil, 38 special, 357 Magnum, 303, 7.5 by 55 Swiss, 12 gauge, and 410. Thanks for any advice. So, you're, yeah, Dylan 650, and then also do a Mac Jr. Well, it depends on what. Shot. Yeah, for budget and how much he's looking to shoot. Yes, that's true. Because if you were like yeah. Mo and do small batches, <laughs> then you can get away with a rock chucker and you'd be fine. <laughs> I mean, if you just want to start off with just making some special stuff, like for the seven point five by fifty five or the three hundred three, I mean, like a rock chucker is is really good for that, and they're they're cheap. Otherwise, yeah, get the three fifty or not the three fifty, the six fifty. That'll do all those. The 938, 357, all the way up yeah. to the 7,555. And, and go over to the depends on how much it uh, Once again, depends on how much you shoot. 12 gauge and 410. You could get a couple Lee single stage presses 
for a hundred bucks each. Mm. They're they're dirt cheap for the the least single stage things. But you can also go on to like gun nuts or anything like oh, that. Yeah, and also yeah buy something. a used one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or I, you can I have a other with reloading most of these nine millimeter. The primer price is gonna like kill you. Yeah, uh, twelve gauge. Good. There's there's no point. You're not gonna be able to beat the pricing of tar- target target no. loads. Four ten, t- four ten. You can. Well, four ten for one. You can't. Yeah, it's really you hard to find. Eat. So, but okay. So where do you get the shells for it? Like uh, the so, well, he so if he already has the shells and he's going through it, then it's worth it to re- to to reload right now. Anyways, it may mm-hmm. change within the next year because four ten is like yeah, it's like it's the twenty eight a- gauge of a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. So th- I think some of these are a pain the in the ass. You're stockpiled. Then you don't. <laughs> that's the right way to. Do it. I have a, I have a dumb question because I don't I don't uh, <laughs> reload shotgun shells. Uh, like how do they hold up? Like how many times can you reload a, uh, your typical shotgun shell? A few times. Yeah, the shell. I would say a few out. times. It is. I would say as long as your hull is in good shape and it's not torn, then you you'd be fine. Okay. Well, eventually, the, will the crimp like crack? Yeah. Like if it, it's going to okay. do something because okay. you're that's yeah. the hardest part yeah. that you're reworking yeah. every time. That's but, just plastic. I mean, like uh, sh- Mike's saying, shotgun loading is a whole other world because now with your specific hull, yeah. Now you need that specific wad, and yep. there's there's a, it's a whole. Now hey. you're dealing with different lead size, yep. different powder charges. Oh, there's. Mm. You go you six to. crimp, eight crimp, or whatever, and yeah. Yeah, it's... that's why I said you have to have specific dye specific to it, but it is worth it. Um, yeah, that's one thing as... I like about that Lee single stage. It has a spot for a six crimp or an eight crimp. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't reload for half the things he's mentioning here. I would just buy <laughs> factory. And like, if you shoot a lot of three hundred three, yeah, reload for it. Get a yeah. big bu- box of their big bag of those Cam Pro one eighty green bullets. You find a lot so, of three hundred three though. Uh, like hundreds. Not like I've shot a hundred total. Like I shoot hundreds. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say year. how many people would shoot hundreds though. Anyway. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is that there's like a, a limit on this <laughs> seven uh, uh, seven point five by fifty five Swiss. You'll make up the cost of the dies pretty quick yeah. uh, shooting that stuff. If so, if you shoot your uh, your K31 or whatever a lot, then yeah, I, maybe, maybe. 7.6, yeah, but, and then also 9 mil you would, but 9 mil is like, look at the deal that Mel found, right? And it's primers, not worth it. Primers yeah. are going to, primers are like hen's teeth right now too, so just, yeah. you might And they're well. not going to get any better for the rest of the year, I don't think. No, You need a progressive bit. to make it worth it to shoot 9 mm or to reload 9 millimeter. Oppressive yeah. involves like a high upfront cost. Correct. Um, you need to find yeah. really great deals on primers. You need to but... scrounge your brass. Otherwise, it's not worth it. You can't buy new. Oh, uh, yeah. If you're buying brass, no, no. It's... If you're buying brass, then it's, it's that deal <laughs> that I got from Tenda stuff, is it's... cheaper. But I am going to say yeah. this, and I'm 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 doing a Adriel here where I'm taking advantage of people. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> it's called cool. capitalism. How the world yeah. works. <laughs> Go on to gun nuts because people were just basically offloading a lot of stuff because of the fact that they didn't with C twenty one. They're going okay. I'm out. I just want to sell all my guns and all my shit so that um, I can actually get out of it because it's not that near and dear to me, and I just want to um, offload all my stuff. I recently had a conversation with somebody at work about that. Anyways, but um, you can get some good deals out there. So if you want to actually yeah. reload, go into it. You got to look. Yeah. Yeah, Russ is saying double A hauls, uh, minimum five times nice. to 12 reloads. And nice. he's reloading 410 for 644, but his primers were $45 a thousand and now they're 75. I know. That's craziness. By the way, wow. Russ, Russ is one of my favorite people ever because. Uh, he and my 28 gauge trials and tribulations. He's the one that uh, sent me the Mac Jr. So thank you, Russ. Mm. Um, I, I, on the 38 and 357 Magnum, mm. uh, go on your range Facebook page and uh, say, hey, I want to make a thousand uh, 38 special or 357 Magnum. Does anyone have a progressive that I could borrow? I'll buy you a case of beer. 
and go over to their place and reload it there. Because if you make or a thousand though, rounds yeah. of that stuff, you'll like you're set for like years. No one shoots revolvers enough to like to need more than like a thousand rounds. Yeah. Uh, unless you do it for Ipsic and you're crazy. Beer and reloading sounds good. <laughs> That's that's how I would do that. I would make like a Beer thousand rounds. Beer is later. Oh, oh okay. God. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's for the other. It's for the, it's for the guy you're borrowing. There, they get to no, drink. You I get know. to reload on their equipment. Yeah. That's true, but then you actually get to drink the beer because you guys actually after reloading. Yes. Yes. Well. After yes. reloading. So it's kind of like buying a Christmas gift that you like for somebody I yeah. just so you can go over there and use it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look what i bought you oh my god it's so awesome isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's my favorite <laughs> yeah. but no you're not wrong He's, hey bring a case here let me help you with that <laughs> yeah but you, uh, for, also, yeah. Uh, you, you do it all the time don't you like you have guys that come over and you guys reload yeah. together yeah, or yeah, you'll yeah. say hey listen i'm gonna actually buy this who wants to go in on it as well yep and, and then you got mo who guys. only does a hundred at a time and it's oh. like <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna try to make some two two three this weekend yeah. and i don't know how many i'm gonna make oh, i i would love to make a few hundred but like it's so it's such a pain in the ass to reload okay i have to ask our listeners anybody out there i'm looking for a gila and 22 lr in high velocity if you know of anybody that has it please let me know i'm looking across the country i was able to find one box at sfrc i bought it the um it was one of the uh a brick of 500 but i'm willing to yeah i'm looking for it across the country nobody has it sure you don't want some wildcat no, Wildcat. I don't want Winchester. <laughs> I got Wildcat. Some Wildcat. No, Wildcat. no I, I don't. Okay, well. okay. Well, we don't have any emails this week, uh, but if you're if you are shopping, go to our website, and on the left hand side there, there's a Cabela's link. It won't cost you any more, but we'll get a little bit of a kickback from from you using that link when you. You can go to Cabela's and make a purchase. And once in a month or so, we're going to go through and we're going to see once what in a month? what the anonymous people bought and read them out and kind of guess what your plans are and what you're doing with them. Take over the world. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Mike, there is none. That's what we do every night, isn't it? I went across the country and I've looked already. What? Yes. No, that's what we're at. What is your plan tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Yeah. Take over the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In this, who's the pinky and who's the brain? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, I'm not I have no answer. <laughs> You're all bald, so one of you is the brain. And I'm pinky, I guess, because oh, okay. I'm, I'm not bald. <laughs> <laughs> I'm short, but I'm not bald. <laughs> okay, you're not okay. That would be brain criteria if you're short. Short and round. <laughs> Kelly, how much of that cough medicine have you had I tonight? Gonna ask. I was gonna say. <laughs> Smaller <laughs> sips, Kelly. It was Two a fingers. new bottle. It was a new bottle when Two I started. Fingers? <laughs> this is my second glass. This is four, five fingers. Six. Six. <laughs> This it's still hey. not <laughs> it's it, Well, still if you not would working. like to send the show an email, Sorry. message on Facebook or Instagram, we'll uh, read it out here and answer. You know, send the email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Yep. Uh, we don't have any new Patreon supporters, but we do have a new Utron supporter, Spencer. Sweet. So. We just Spencer. started uh, getting all our stuff transferred over there, and we are now live streaming to Utron as well. So if you want to support the show, head on to over to our page on Utron, and you can subscribe there. I think that's and, awesome. Yeah, I think I think it really is because of the fact that you know YouTube tends to mm, YouTube's it, trying to put the squeeze on on people who are going to understand. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I've Putting been, content. Uh, I've been putting together some content for for Utreon for Hunting Gear Guy. I think it's uh, I think it's a really good plan. It's like it's that mix of like you like um, Edwards was mentioning. It's that mix of Patreon and YouTube that uh, 
and it just makes it easier to do like crowdfunded stuff. So I'm going to yeah. be putting more yeah. stuff on it. So thank you, Spencer, for suggesting that as well. Yeah, yeah, he's been on us about that. Um, I know. We're still on Patreon, so if you want to support us through there instead, you can go on to Patreon and find us there as well. Uh, yeah. We do have a few YouTube comments. Um, Adriel, you want to take the first one from Tony? Yeah, I think it's related to me. He says, the only thing is, mill syrups are so expensive these days. Or you get a Kirkano, but the ammo is expensive and hard to find. Oh, my see. God. Uh, 45 bucks a box. It's not expensive. It can't, it's like, you, you're not going to find it at like your ye old hunting shop. I'm not going to find any there. Uh, but, that's uh, the but it's, it's out there. That's the stuff you want to actually reload to. If you, you can do it, but how many shots are you going to take with a kind of look seriously? I'm going to, I know you are yeah. until the, uh, JB weld falls off. <laughs> my kids like shooting them. Like the, the putting the clip in the fact they're so short and handy. Like my kids love those things. Nice. You're a fan of the Carcano that you have been for years. I like carbines. I like yeah. short guns. They're more handy. And I think like that gun got a lot of things right. I hate the sights on it. The sights are garbage, right. but love the clip feed mechanism on it. It's just like, it's so cool. Okay, I did listen to that portion of the episode when you were talking about JB Weld. What have you done? Have you done anything with that? Oh yeah, they're JB welded. The the are front they? sights are like, oh yeah. Uh which one? This one over here. Yeah. So I haven't filed it to I haven't filed it to shape yet. So it's just the ugly like built up. I need to file it so it <laughs> looks not like shit. But mm -hmm. I oh my gosh! <laughs> built it up, and it's on there. That's a that's that's an inch and a half, two inches. Wow. Okay. So, but I know you had to site, bury right? it. Yeah, you have to bury it, so you, you at least need that height. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna shape it so it looks better, and then um, put some uh, pink uh, spray paint on it or something. I wish I could be there for that site pictures? and process. His sorry, Kelly, go ahead. I was just going to say, can you please send us pictures? Because I'm going to take it to yes. the yeah. um, gunsmith at SFRC and say, look I at this. Video, I want video <laughs> of the site in process. Instead of turning dials, it's just taking the file out, file it a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but you already know. You've taken it out and you shot it. So you know where you were burying it anyway. So you already know. Specifically, mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of like, bleh. Meh. <laughs> the only person who really wasn't a fan of the Carcano was JFK. <laughs> like, uh... See, that's why I like mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, yeah, give Kelly's voice a rest. Uh, Mo, do you want to take the next yep. one from Gillifran? Gillifran? Uh, I made a Utreon account a few months ago after seeing Ian McCullum's video my youtube content is about half gun builds and upgrades so it's only a matter of time before they notice me and get the ban hammer at least i know it has a second home where it's safe well yeah, yeah. we can yeah. go over to you yeah utreon utreon and i'll take the last one last one from june selly it's and it, so the previous two were for last week's show. This one's in response to the Gersan testing and review. And yeah. it's a, it's, it says it's a semi automatic with inertia rotating bolt. It's going to kick. It's a shotgun. There's always an appropriate way to hold every firearm. If anyone complains about their shoulder, I recommend they take 100 milligrams of triactin. Triactin like a man. Uh, really? Yeah. Really? Nah. Anyways. I, I laugh when I, I do get a good chuckle when I read some of these because you got to laugh. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, thank you for the comments, but it's like they don't understand that. It's like trying to find that fine point and yeah. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> with, with any shotgun, you have to yeah. know how to hold it. Part of it is I want to do a lot of hold it. Yeah. And no way to walk away. away and, yeah. Going. I mean, yeah. as far as it's going to kick, it's a shotgun. Yeah, okay, you're you're right to an extent, but there's a lot of shotguns that have Here's... different belt recoil. Right. What if you're a gamer? What if you want to go fast? Getting a no. shotgun that recoils a lot doesn't make you go fast. No. It makes you go slow. No. Even yeah. staying in there, inertia, <clears throat> rotating bolt style. 
you take a Stoger M3K or the M3000, basically the same shotgun, you put it up against the Benelli or even the Gersan, and it has more felt recoil than the Benelli or the Gersan. Hey, if you, you know? take a minute and you learn how to hold a shotgun and do it appropriately and fit it to, like, you didn't even have to really, okay, you do have to fit it to you, but give somebody a shotgun and give them some pointers on actually how to hold it. I do a lot of the ladies day and they're all scared of not, they're all scared, but a lot of them are scared of tough uh, shotguns and they put me on the shotgun stage. I just actually walk people through it, walk women through it. And once they shoot it and once they're given some instruction and then shoot it and they're going, uh, I'm not sure why anybody. And I said, because you were taught how to hold it appropriately. Mm. Yeah. That's it. So, yeah. try oh, yeah, and it's definitely act, time. Try acting well. like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, and if you give us a message on Instagram, Facebook, reviews, YouTube videos, we'll post them up and read them. What about uh, you, Tron? Can we comment yeah. on that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. In Utron, we got used to saying that as well because we are on there and streaming there okay all right get into shout outs recommendations kelly i have a shout out i want to give a shout out to our friend down in smyrna spencer for recommending utreon and getting us on over there so give us a shout out or not give us a shout out give us a comment on there and we'll read it as well so thank you very much Angel, Mo. Uh, mine is to the guys that do the Rimfire Nation <laughs> podcast. I've been listening to the new stuff and their uh, their backlog. Um, that's good information. So I have no idea who you're talking about. Uh, the Rimfire Nation podcast with I'm uh, I'm, I'm kidding. It's, it's <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're, okay. It's it's been a long day. Yeah, I know you're. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mo. Uh, I believed you for a second. Shame on me. And I haven't even been drinking. You know better than to trust us. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> oh my God, Mo. You're so cute. Uh, yeah, I'm adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a shout out to, uh, oh, uh, a recommendation. Watch Brendan Herrera's video on the AK 12. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go over we'll and check that. that out. Give a shout out to Mike as well. He's gonna find me some Aguila. Nah, there you go. Good cool. Luck. Yeah. Godspeed. I do not <laughs> Godspeed. I know. don't have a shout out or recommendation for this week. So with that, we're gonna sign off. So check us out on Gunners of Canada. Give us a like on Facebook, YouTube, YouTube, Utron. Uh give us a review on any of those comment join the ccfr and we will see you guys next week bye guys bye. Night. so if you have any comments or questions for the show please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com now go grab a gun and shoot something when the talking is over it's time to get a gun